We are live. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, indeed. Hello. Hi. It's cold here in Indianapolis. And she's, I don't like it. She's very upset about the cold. It's don't not like cold. It. It's, it's cold. It's brisk. Mm. I'd say it's more. No, it's cold when it's like zero degrees, Muck. It's, it's that's when it's okay. cold. That's when you know that it's freaking cold. That's, We're not yet in the cold. It's like forty-seven degrees here. That's not cold. I don't like it. That's basically spring in Indiana. Uh, so many trolls yesterday because of the huge number of people that uh -oh. apparently wanted to listen to us talk about the debate. A lot of people. Um, so a lot of people trolls. with nothing better to do with their time. A lot of, <laughs> lot of people with nothing better. I mean, if you're going to like waste time by saying watching you guys is a waste of time, then yeah. you okay. should question your entire life, yes. really, because <laughs> that's dumb. Yeah. Um, we got the funniest card from Suzanne. Suzanne from Canada. Hey, Suzanne. <laughs> I, at first, I was a little taken aback, I must say, because you open it and you just see this, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, why would you send a card like that? <laughs> well, I but mean, then you open some it other further, people would send us that car on, a card on purpose. And then it says this, babe in total control of herself. I love it. It is from Suzanne and Tino, who write from Canada, hey, bitches and Rob. Greetings from Canada. We love your show and watch every day. It's a shit show with our government, too. Liberals are killing our economy and our culture. Keep up the great work. Tino sends Rob a big man hug. <laughs> so that was sweet. And then also, we got these masks. Where's the... Uh, oh, yeah. From Liz Sullivan. These masks are amazing. This is bullshit, but I need groceries, so whatever. <laughs> I'm totally wearing this. She said, good morning from the home of the New Madrid earthquake of 1811 to 1812. I discovered you on my Facebook feed sometime in March and have been hooked ever since. I now listen to the podcast, catch your show on WIBC. I'm so thankful you shut up in my feed. I found my people. My as it is difficult to find common sense in this world, I work as a non-emergency medical transportation driver, so masks are a part of my daily life, whether I like it or not. I saw these and immediately thought of you chicks and how you stand on all the bullshit surrounding mask wearing. Just had to send you a couple. You gals decide who gets which one. This is the holy grail of bullshit. <laughs> this is another one. The holy grail of bullshit. I love it. So I love that this is this is bullshit, but I need groceries, so, so whatever. That's <laughs> so great. Thank um, you. We got to talk about the, the main headline that is uh, that is featured on the Daily Mail right now. It's very, very sad, sad news, you guys, when anyone loses a baby, especially when they're, you know, four or five months along in a pregnancy. It's, it's or whenever, devastating. Whenever. Or whenever. Whenever. I mean, it's, it's whenever you lose a baby, it sucks. But I mean, you know, it's one thing to miscarry. It's entirely another to give birth mm -hmm. to a baby that doesn't make it. And that is exactly what has happened to Chrissy Teigen and John Legend. And listen, we are not fans of either of them, mm -hmm. um, but this is awful. This is awful, terrible, horrible news that they lost their baby last night. Um, and it was a baby boy named Jack. But we have questions. Yeah, we have a couple, a couple questions. There's just how a couple. This has been responded to. Just a couple questions. So, uh, okay, so first off, here are some of the. They have. There are pictures. There's professional photographs. They have professional photographs. These are two of them, okay? Which I have questions about that because, like, the one in particular of her, I mean, they're black and white, they're filtered, they're professional. So, they had a professional photographer come in to take pictures of them during this moment of just extreme pain, right? I mean, it's because you're in a lot of pain. I mean, I've, I've lost two babies, not, not as far along, but I've miscarried two babies, and it's a painful thing. It was very private. I mean, just like I talk about it now, but at the time, I didn't talk about it. I talked about it with like her, my husband, obviously, and my, my family, but with her, and that was it, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you just, it's not something that you put out in the open. You know what I mean? At least I didn't. Well, at least it didn't used to be. Yeah. And now, apparently, it is. Yeah, so that's like a thing. So that, I guess that's my first question. Like, is that something that we do now? Is like we take pictures of ourself, ourselves, like in these moments and then we put them out into the open is that and if we're doing that why why are we doing that why are we doing that yeah why are we publicizing the most painful moments of our entire lives yeah. in picture form is that just like a maybe is that a generational thing is that what we're doing now because of like the gram and because of social media and and whatnot is that i'm just we're just putting the question out there. Just have the question. It's just That's a all. question. But I also have another question, which is because there are photos of her cradling 
this baby. Yeah. And we know she was somewhere between 20 and 24 weeks, uh -huh. apparently. Yeah. Um, which, as you know, like 22 weeks, there's plenty of examples of kids living. Totally. Um, you know, or being born and living from that early, early, early age of gestation. So the question is, because she's obviously a very pro-choice woman, mm -hmm. when you look at your baby who is born between 20 and 24 weeks and you've lost that baby and you're holding it, grieving uh -huh. that baby. Yeah, it's a child. How do you remain pro-choice? How do you? I will never understand this. Yeah. That is a question after, I have. Yeah, after that, how do you fight so hard for um, for abortion after that? How do you do that? And how do you how do you dismiss it as like not a, a baby? Yeah, because, and when, and when was the point, like if she, if that would have happened, you know, two weeks prior, was it not a baby? That's another question I, I have. I mean, he has a name. They yeah. named this baby Jack. It's a child. It's a child. So to all of the liberal celebrities who are mourning with her, I have that same question. Mm -hmm. When was Jack not Jack? When was Jack not Jack? Yeah. Was Jack always Jack? <laughs> or was Jack only Jack at 20 weeks? Or is Jack only Jack when you want Jack? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I... Because that seems to be the rule. Like, it, these people that are pro-choice are like, well, it's a baby if you want it. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want it, then somehow it's, it's justifiable not, it's, and it's not an actual it's, baby. Then it's not Jack. I don't get that. So that's... These are the questions. Those are our questions. Um... There are new questions now because the uh, Commission on Presidential Debates that sponsors the televised version of presidential debates has decided that after the shit show that we all experienced and lived through on Tuesday night, um, you still feel you still hiring I, I a lawyer. Feel, She's still hiring a lawyer, you guys. She I feels demand violated. reparations she, for for she that wants, experience. She wants <laughs> all the re all the reparations. <laughs> Yeah. So um, they are going to change the structure, mm. and now I saw some proposed, like some possible ways. That shot collars. Do that. They're going to use shot collars. <laughs> oh my god, that would be awesome. Wouldn't it be great if they should say, <laughs> <laughs> if they had? That would be great. awesome. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> well, but the proposed changes are Trump's microphone, and they make sure to say that specifically on the Daily Mail headline. Trump's microphone could be turned off or he might get a time penalty in the next debate if he keeps interrupting under these potential new plans. That's just speculation. We don't know what the new plans are. We just know that there will be new plans because they they've said that they are, you know, there has to be additional structure provided that will prevent a similar shit show from occurring again. So, you know what Donald Trump's response to that was? <laughs> Try getting a new anchor and a smarter Democrat candidate. <laughs> <laughs> it's so Trumpy. Uh, he also he also mentioned that um the ratings too cuz you know he's very focused on the ratings. <laughs> and so he was talking about the ratings and how I mean they were really ridiculously high. What was it like 65 million people watched that debate or something. And so when there was talk about Biden not not participating in a second or third or whatever debate He's going to do it because mm -hmm. the the ratings were so high, the networks are literally going to beg for him to do this because they're all the eyeballs were on these two guys. Yeah, they definitely... They're going to do it again, you guys. And Joe had actually said yesterday that he is going to do it again. Of course. Did you see those masks? Aren't they great? Oh, listen, you got a car. You're included. Of in course they're going to do it again. The ratings were way too high, so you know? Is this even worth rating? It's well, like, I mean, it's it's a little shocking when you first open it, but you are included in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching a WWE fight, you know. I mean, it's, you can't look away. It's yeah, people are it, people are gonna watch a second one and a third one just to see what happens now because we. She has really small hands. It's gonna. She does for a woman. <laughs> What does that mean? Well, women generally have bigger. It's not as small as the tiny, 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 the tiny, tiny, right. tiny with the one. teeny, tiny. But don't thing. isn't that a fair thing that women generally have bigger, you know, handwriting? I don't. Write? I don't know. I don't I'm not think a, that's true. I'm not a handwriting analyst. Write I don't something know. right now. I mean, well, I know. Right. You don't tell Come me on. what to do. In the middle of a Come video. On, do don't tell me what People to do. People want to see. Go. Go. No, do some don't. audio. We have a lot of audio, Rob. You guys, this Comey stuff. Oh my god it's heating up and of course it's being totally overshadowed by like a gajillion other things right it's that guy 
Ugh. He's literally the king of, I don't know. Yeah. That's like, you could just sum up his entire testimony yesterday as, oh. Well, what do you know? You were head of the FBI. Don't you think you should know something? <laughs> About Maybe, what you are leading? I know. It's, you're the head of that. So you, th you should know maybe a few things. Then why are you doing that job? <laughs> Go sit on your moss and quote some Robert Frost. The guy is so He's insufferable. Ridiculous. He is ridiculous. And he got absolutely torn to shreds by Ted Cruz, by Lindsey Graham, by Mike Lee. We're going to be playing all of that audio on our show from 9 to 11 on WIBC.com, and you should definitely and Mike listen Lee, to that. And Mike Lee was actually kind of nice. Mike Lee is genuinely disappointed. He feels like betrayed. He feels betrayed by personally. him. Yeah, because yeah. I think he had an actual personal relationship with the guy. Mm -hmm. And so he's just like, God, you are such a huge, colossal <laughs> disappointment. Like, <laughs> I thought I knew who you were. And you are, like, you're corrupt. You're, yeah. you're not just a liar. You, I think you did this on purpose. You did all of this with purpose, on purpose. You're a horrible, horrible man. And that sucks that you're a horrible man. Like, because I actually trusted you. I think that's how I think, he. I like. I thought he might cry. Yeah, I think that's how Mike Lee feels about about James Cummy, which it was weird to watch that because usually politicians, I always feel like they have no souls, <laughs> and so just watching that whole exchange, I was like, wow. I mean, he feels <laughs> there's personally. Soul in there. There's a little soul. He feels personally betrayed by this guy, and that it kind of broke my heart a little. I was like, wow, it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Then Ted Cruz was like. You're either totally incompetent or completely corrupt. Yeah. And I don't think you're incompetent. Yeah. <laughs> totally said that. I love that so much. It was the greatest. Oh, that was good stuff. God, he's a jerk, this guy. A lot of talk, uh, a lot of chitter chatter about this whole exchange that Chris Wallace and Donald Trump had about Proud Boys and like yeah. right wing extremists the or proud, whatever. The Proud Boy thing. Oh my God, it's blown up. Into and it, and this it, thing. And it also irritates me because the Proud Boys have been sort of elevated beyond Antifa now. It's like now this is going to become the narrative. I think the media is going to run with it. So just watch for that to happen. Oh, yeah. You're going to hear Proud Boys like nonstop. Yeah. Uh, from and now on. Antifa will be pushed down. It's Now, as I understand it, that's the group started by Gavin McInnes. who has been like banned from everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he, in the day when he was on YouTube, we actually shared quite a bit of his videos because he's hilarious. Uh, he does great satire. And so, you know, we shared a bunch of his stuff and then he got banned from everything because sometimes he just crosses like he yeah. steps a foot over the line you might say and so we got banned from everything um and then now the the group is led by a black man so i don't you know it's very difficult to like call them white supremacists i don't think that's their thing um but regardless people were very upset with trump not condemning white supremacy in the debate, even though he did it like three times and he's done it a million times before the debate. They, and so people are just like, well, that's it. He's a, he's a white supremacist because he wouldn't condemn them. But they believe, the Proud Boys believe in um, saving Western civilization through violence. It, do they? Yeah, they do. I, are there a lot of examples of this violence? I don't know if there's, I don't know about the examples, but they've been, they've said that. I mean, they've actually said that. They've they they do yeah they're all about the they they're they're about they do believe in the violence it's not like they don't not believe in the violence but it's i haven't seen their agenda but i, I did not know but that. when it comes to what's happening in our streets right now it's antifa and i think that's what bothers me is that the narrative now the media is going to run with this proud boys thing cuz they want to blame everything on on extreme right wing. Well, then it shouldn't be people. hard for them to come up with like a gajillion examples of Proud Boys violence, and I haven't seen it. So, like, if if it's that readily available, if this is truly what they believe in, and this is what they're all about, show me the money. Like, show it and prove that there is somebody that is worthy of condemnation to this extent. Listen, you don't need receipts anymore. There's, it's it's not like anybody needs receipts for anything. All you need is the media to just spew a bunch of lies. And to, and to run with the narrative. I mean, we all were here for the Russia crap, right? It's like, it doesn't matter if there are receipts or if it's the truth. The media is just gonna tell you what they're gonna tell you, whether it's the truth or not. We all know this, right? I mean, it's not like 
This isn't brain surgery, y'all. And I it, guess even when you have receipts, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. The BLM and Antifa is literally all over the place. People are getting arrested. I, Some lady just got charged with murder. Yeah. The B, a BLM organizer for like ramming her car into a bunch of pedestrians. Exactly. I mean, there's all kinds of receipts and for that. You didn't hear Chris Wallace ask about that. I mean, this is the this is the thing. It doesn't matter what's actually happening. It's what they want you to think is happening, and that's what they're going to cram down your throats. This is. You know, the, the thing is, that's why it's, it's so unbelievably important for people to think critically and to not pay attention to all of this garbage that these people are trying to feed you. Because this is what they're going to run with now. They're going to run with the Proud Boys bullshit now. This is what they're going to do. <laughs> well, Sorry, unfortunately, the Proud Boys were like, oh, Trump's totally on to, like, he's like telling us, go do your thing. Well, no, he wasn't, no. first of all. And then second of all, there was audio later yesterday of Trump going, I have no idea who that's these the people thing. are. I don't even think he knows. <laughs> he has no he idea. He has no idea who these people are. Yeah. So now they're getting was, blown up and I don't even even know why I think it well because they want to blame every because the media and the let they want to blame and deflect and they want to blame everything on these proud boys that's what they want to do because they can't because they because Joe Biden is saying that Antifa is an idea okay well then the proud boys are an idea too it's this is the thing it's can like we oh that? can the, we do that Antifa is just a construct really because okay because you can't bail out a construct. Meanwhile, Antifa groups on Twitter are like, nah, we're gonna, we're here. We're like actually a thing. We're gonna do all the damage. It's, it's a, tell that to David Dorn's family. You know, it's, it's God. These people are. <laughs> it, By the way, my husband, even though he's not awake yet, has not yet condemned white supremacy this morning, and I feel like that's a criminal thing. It's, I mean, how dare he not condemn them? He's obviously a white supremacist, and that's all that you listen, can from that. Listen, the guy who was, like, in charge of the whole Charlottesville thing, I don't even know his name. He's, like, some crazy whack job. He is a white supremacist, right? The guy who was doing all the crap in Charlottesville. He endorsed Joe Biden. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like, it's, and Joe Biden has, has actually, he, Joe Biden has said the racist things, right? I mean, you can listen, go look for audio. Joe Biden has, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. I mean, there have been t time and time again, Joe Biden has said racist things. Do you think that they, you know, scream that and tell people, it's, it's, that all gets brushed under the rug, right? I mean, it's, if the guy that, I mean, he has actually canoodled with people in the KKK, they don't care. They don't care. They so want to like paint Donald Trump as a racist, and they have since day one. They are still parroting and talking about that one quote. Remember the quote from the Charlottesville quote? Like, oh, they're the fine people on both the sides. The fine people on both sides. They take it out of context, and they don't actually play the full clip. They, they still, they still talk. I mean, Chris Wallace said that the other night. It's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Because they want so badly for Trump to be a racist when he's he's just not. <laughs> he's not. So, th listen, they're going to run with that whatever narrative they run, run they want to run with. It's whether or not you want to believe this crap media we have. It's it's up to you. You know, you have to think for yourself. I just hope that, you know, when, when everybody on the left immediately just jumps on that bandwagon and starts yelling about Proud Boys, I would love for people to just say, please provide one example of all the violence and the mayhem that mm -hmm. they personally have created. Just one example. Yeah, would be one, great. during the past whatever, four months, you know, what, what city have they burned down? You know, show us. That, show us. Remember the dude that just killed those, or didn't kill the cops, but shot those two LA cops, just point blank, just like shot them in their car. Remember, mm -hmm. and, the, and the one cop's jaw was like blown off and she's still helping the other one. Um, that guy has been caught and charged and I was super super happy about that because I was really worried with as fuzzy and grainy and like not specific and detailed as the surveillance video was of that I was like how are they ever going to catch this yeah, guy yeah and they did they got him his name is Deontay Lee Murray good and he was good, taken good. into custody after a lengthy standoff that is fantastic um, so yeah and just so happy that justice is gonna serve that guy so oh! I can't like I also was shocked that during the debate the debate the other night that um they weren't talking about the Disney layoffs and how devastating that because of COVID. Yeah, they're not going to mention that. Yeah, they didn't talk about that. Disney laid off. And if they would have, Biden would have said, it's Trump's personal fault that Disney has laid off 29,000. <laughs> yeah, but oh, by the way, I'm going to, but oh, by the way, I'm going to shut down the country when I get into office. Right. <laughs> because that's the answer to shut down everything. Because that's his answer. So, you know, he, he's mad at Trump for, 
the way that he's handled it, but Trump wants to open up the economy again, but yet Biden wants to shut everything back down. Okay, well, that means there's going to be more layoffs. So Does he not put the, like, no. those are dots that it seems like that Joe would can't connect. require firing synapses in his brainular he area, and he doesn't have those anymore. By but, the yeah. way, Chris Wallace has spoken out about the debacle oh, the other night. Really? And he has said oh. that he's very disappointed in how it all turned out, and he didn't realize that that was going to be Trump's strategy. Oh. So it's all Trump's fault. Of he had course. nothing to do with any of that crazy yeah it is trump's fault meanwhile though his colleagues thought he sucked you know there i was actually waiting for more of them to speak out and i think that they all got told not to probably in some way or I'm another sure. i'm sure somebody like a some corporate memo went out because i thought like, for sure tucker would at least rip on him yeah i mean mm -hmm. i thought tucker would of all yeah. people and there just wasn't yeah well they did they were tweeting about it like laura ingram was tweeting about it greg gutfeld was tweeting about it um brian kilmeade mm -hmm. they were people were tweeting about how they were just like this is a freaking joke you know and trump is basically debating the moderator this is so dumb but, then, but even they were kind of tepid about how they criticize. Well, him, it's their you know I mean? it's their coworker. I know. It's like us, you know, going after Tony Katz. I mean, we do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but but at the same time, like out in the open, if can yeah. you imagine us being like, this is he's a complete joke and he should be fired. I mean, this that's true. We really, would we that. wouldn't do that. It's just it's unprofessional to do that with a coworker. So they can't really say that, even though you know they're probably thinking it. Yeah, I mean they have to because it was they so have, just painfully obvious. It was. It was ridiculous. It totally was. Yeah, I, you found the weirdest story. <laughs> About Which one? The 36 year old man. Oh my God. There's this, you guys, anybody who has kids out there, this is so terrifying. Terrifying. There was a Louisiana man, 36 year old, who was arrested when Florida parents discovered that he'd been living in their 15 year old daughter's closet for a month. This guy. <laughs> This guy, okay, met the teen online, online. This is what happens online, right? <laughs> Two years ago, he's a pedophile, obviously, um, traveled to meet her for sex. From Louisiana to Florida. And he's been living in her closet. So, like, mom and dad go to work every day. He comes out of the closet, hangs out in the house. Can you imagine? And then when, like, at night, when everybody gets home from work, he goes and just hangs out in the closet. Can you even? I just can't. I, how do you not know? No. How do you not I mean, know? How big is their house? Like, is this one of those palatial mansions, I wonder? And like a, it's obviously a walk-in closet. <laughs> He's living in the closet. I, oh, oh, my, my God. God. I just, I saw the story, and I was like, oh, my God. There's a Isn't man, there's a 36-year-old man living in this kid's closet. And then finally, like this past Sunday, they finally heard suspicious noises oh, and yeah. thought, Maybe we should check out what's going on in our daughter's closet. He's been living there for a month. <laughs> I can just imagine. I have a 15-year-old. I cannot imagine, like, all of a sudden discovering a grown-ass woman living in his yeah, closet. That like, dude, there's no way that would happen. That dude would never make it out of my house alive. I mean, I the fact that he was... And he's a, super creepy looking look. The fact that he was arrested... He him? was... Yeah, you see it? Like, nice stash, dude. Gross. I mean, I and he has, like, a sunburn. Did you see that? Yeah. He must have been, like, laying out at their pool <laughs> all day. I'm <laughs> looking at that, I'm like, there's no way that man would make it out of my house alive. There's no way. And yeah. so the warning is from child psychologist Dr. Wendy Rice. This is the warning. You ready for the warning? Kids can do things under our noses and oh. in your house that you might not be aware of that could shock you. Get the electronics out of the bedroom. That's key. None of us really need to be sleeping with our phones next to our beds. And least of all, teens. We have that rule in our house. Yeah, don't go to bed with electronics. No so, electronics in bed. Mm -mm. Also, uh, Kylie Jenner's daughter, Stormy, has just started kindergarten um, at home. Because, you know, she's in California and you can't do anything in California. And she, <laughs> Kylie Jenner posted a photo of her on her first day of going to homeschool like, what uh, is that? What is that with a backpack. Mean? Like, why would you need a backpack if you're at home? I know. I don't understand But either. it's a $12,000 backpack, you it's, guys. It's an, it's an, it's an Hermes. Air yeah. I mean, $12,000 backpack for a five-year-old. Can you even? I just cannot. 
I guess when you have a billion dollars, that's like nothing. Like you just have to do that, it's, right? Like okay, you really, you don't though. You don't have to do. But that. I mean, if you have that kind of money, then isn't twelve thousand dollars like the same to us as like a nickel? And then you're just like, wow, this is a steal. I mean, you could still get a Jansport though. You can still <laughs> just go to Amazon and get a Jansport and get her like a twenty five dollar backpack. You know? I mean, you could. You could. But I'm just saying, I think you just get a totally warped sense of what actual money is. I suppose. And then you just think everything is. I mean. Sam Walton, though, didn't. Sam Walton was a gajillionaire. He's the guy who, That's owned, true. who ran Walmart. He drove a pickup truck, you know, and his he didn't, he didn't, do, so you really don't have to become a, a give your two-year-old an Hermes or a Birkin bag hag. You don't have to do that. You just don't. I mean, you actually can live, know, you can live crazy. modestly and teach your kids to live modestly and you don't have to do that. Also, another uh, exciting piece of news from California they are going to be the first state to pay reparations. They've got themselves a nice little task force put Where together. Where is this? California. Okay. Yeah. I'm and not so, shocked. I'm not so, shocked. Uh, People this, are fleeing. This group was appointed by Newsom. Oh. And they're going to be considering how to actually pay the reparations. I was going to just ask you, how are they going to do they that? they got to figure that out. Okay. So it's going to be paid to descendants of slaves. Now, how are they going to work that out? I don't know. Okay. And then they're also working on creating like some sort of a formal way of apologizing for human rights violations. Okay. So just that no one alive today has any responsibility okay, for. Okay, so just black people in the state. Um, right. Okay, so... It, okay. Just descendants of slaves. Descendants of slaves in, in the, the state, state of California. Right. People are going to leave like crazy. There's I mean, just, you know, like, the whole state is on fire, and, like, they don't mm -hmm. have electricity all no, the time. No. But I mean, this but seems why, important. Why would you need electricity? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares about the, the whole You know what they're going to have to do? Like any state that starts thinking about doing these kinds of things, I wonder if they're going to start doing some sort of 23andMe verification process. Like you can't just be dark-skinned and say, oh, yeah, I'm uh -huh. a descendant. You're going to have to prove it in some sort of tangible way. Yeah, not way. only that, but all these people are already pretending to be black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, look at all these people who we've we've talked about what three women in the past like month or two that have come out and said, "Oh my god, I've been living my life as a black woman and I've been taking up space in the black community. I'm a terrible person, blah." Yeah, you are. You're a psycho cuz you and you don't even look black. <laughs> and they, they you try and you've you've come across as a black person. I can't believe you've, you know, passed as that for this long cuz you're Italian. Give me a break. So this has happened. And so people are going to start pretending to be black so they can get money. But it, but they're going to have to probably give up some privacy in order to do it is what I'm saying. Yeah. My whole point is if this is the is the if this is the way that they start, you know, testing who's really black or who's x percent black, I don't know how else you do that. Yeah, but you know even I mean? if you're black, it doesn't mean you were descended from slaves, right? Right. And so they're going to have that's what I'm saying. They're going to have to do like do... a whole genealogy background this is such just a nightmare. to figure it out. It's so dumb. It's so dumb. No one alive today sla enslaved anyone, and no one alive today was ever enslaved. No. Can we just stop yeah. with this bullcrap? We should totally stop. But it's anyway, the dumbest leave thing it ever. To California, right? And then California, then people are just going to leave. I mean, people are already leaving that that crappy state anyway because of this. Sorry if you live there. I'm just saying, I mean, like, our boy is, is out of there because he's just like, it, you can't, you can't even buy a house there. It's ridiculous. It is crazy. It's so dumb. <gasps> Did we miss the South Park thing? It was, was last, last night. night. Oh. I know. We totally missed it. I'm so mad about I it. I missed we turned, it. Like, we turned it on in, like, the last 10 minutes, and I said, I want to just wait until we can watch the whole yeah. thing. Crap. Yeah. Crap. Because it was yeah. like a pandemic special on South Park last night, and I forgot. Yeah. It was the pandemic special. Crap. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's All see right. What else well, that is, is uh, that is that. People are talking about how they're Irish and stuff like that. Do they get reparations? Well, I mean, no. I'm sorry. You're not enslaved enough. You don't count. You just don't count. <laughs> mm -mm. What if your family live here when there were? You know, this is the thing. Yeah. Yeah. This, I can't wait for them to sort this. This out. is going to be really interesting. And then they good. have to pay money to do that. Like they're going to have to have a whole task force to do this. They do. That, that that's who you appointed. I don't know if they know this, but they're broke. <laughs> They're broke. It's just money. It's like, <laughs> there's plenty Good of luck it. with that liberal celebrity. Let's print some more. Liberal celebrities. Alyssa Milano will be paying for all of that. I can't wait. It's going <laughs> to be And she'd probably be delighted to because mm -hmm, that is how crazy she is. Have fun with that. All right, so we have to go. Yeah, we got to go. All right, you guys. Oh, it. new podcast episode is out. So make it sure is. to listen to it. That's about the GoFundMe stuff. It is. It's pretty good. I listened to it this morning. So you It's all about GoFundMe's. Mock and Daisy show. If you're mm -hmm. not already subscribed, you should be on all of the possible platforms. And you can find all those Mock platforms and, yeah. on our website, chicksontheright.com. Click on our cartoon faces. They're all listed yeah. right there. You guys bring it in. Bring it in. Yay.
Oh, I have a stretch. I feel so good to stretch. You guys have a great day. Bye. Bye.